How do you prevent diabetes? There's interesting data published a couple of years ago about preventing diabetes through plant-based nutrition. And there was actually a linear relationship a, uh, between the amount of plant-based diet and prevention of diabetes. As the incidence goes down, as the plants go up. Now, what is the, what is the cause of that? Is there something magic that you know lowers you know your blood sugar when you're um, when you're eating plants? Well, yeah, the, the magic is actually in the fiber uh, that modulates the absorption of nutrients and uh, gets your insulin levels to sort of flatten out a bit, so that you don't have that uh, insulin being an amazing growth hormone. Uh, it's going to have you're going to have less central obesity less inflammation and less plaque. And so uh, if people are doing a uh, low enough calorie diet so that they're not gaining weight and they're doing a, uh, a good job of uh, a high fiber diet, uh, diabetes really should be preventable. How do you prevent erectile dysfunction? So if people look at uh, the modern commercial uh, zone, you'll see a lot of data on uh, or advertisements for ultrasound techniques um, that or uh, sound wave techniques that will actually break up plaque. And so you're hearing this on the radio, or you're seeing it on television, and people are finally understanding that erectile dysfunction is largely plaque formation in small arteries. And so people say, oh, it's the canary in the coal mine to let you know that you have heart disease. And it's just because the arteries are smaller. And so uh, this information is actually good to get out to the public. I don't know, but eff efficacy of the idea of doing these sound wave uh, treatments. But I can tell you that at least people understand that this is a blood vessel issue and you've got to protect your blood vessels. And so prevention would be nutrition. Uh, making sure that the that the plaque is not developing. And uh, if people are able to do that, they should be able to maintain their erectile function long term. Of all the people you've advised over the last 10 years who followed your advice, what were the results and what percent got to their optimal blood sugar, blood pressure and weight? What percent, what percent reversed major health issues and what percent didn't get the expected results? So that's an interesting, um, I can only give you, that's an interesting question. I would say that I can, I can only give you uh, my impression and some days are better than others. Uh, they're, uh, first of all, as background, as a cardiologist and preventive cardiologist, uh, but I have covered the coronary care unit and I, and I uh, take people once I see them as an inpatient, uh, I have a, I, I can say that over the years, my style has changed. Over the last couple of years, uh, I've been very particular about starting the diet early, as many have. Uh, and it's really a conversation that I have since I'm uh, not the interventionalist. <clears throat> uh, it's someone that's usually come in with a heart attack, gone to the cath lab, an interventional cardiologist has actually put in a stent and they put the patient in the coronary care unit and I'm doing rounds with the house staff then turns in residence the next morning. And so I will have a good conversation with them. You know, I typically tell them, you know, I, I want to have uh, just, just a little bit of your time. I'm going to ask you some questions that seem like the silliest questions you've ever heard. But if you just put up with me for a couple minutes, uh, we'll get through it and you'll understand why I'm saying it. And the, usually the patient says that's okay. And so we start. Say, just tell me in your own words why it is that you came in uh, that ended up in the CCU under my care. And they say, oh, I had a heart attack. I said, okay, that's right. And so what does that heart attack really mean? And what, what happened to your heart? Well, they said, I had a blocked artery. That's correct. And what was it blocked with? Oh, uh, plaque? That's correct. And what is plaque made out of? There's usually a little pause, but almost everyone, regardless of their level of health literacy, can say cholesterol and fat. That's right, cholesterol and fat. And where did the cholesterol and fat come from? And 100% of people will say, I ate it. So that's my opportunity. So I tell people, okay, I'm gonna put you on a plant-based diet, no more cholesterol and fat. 
unless you really want to, we can change your diet back to a regular diet and then we make more money. And that gets a laugh out of 100% of people, um, but it's true. And so I would say that uh, my practice is sort of, um, it's morphed over the years. I have much more, many more tools than I used to have to try to get people to be on a plant-based diet. And um, if you give them the tools, you give them your time and you have a team of people who can support them, uh, then you're going to get much more in the way of, um, of success. So I've got motivated patients because they've had an event. And so I'm not sure that every doctor is going to have the same results that I'm going to have. And I would say over the last 10 years, I have changed so much that I, it's hard to even compare uh, with what I'm able to uh, do to, to change people's outcomes uh, now versus 10 years ago.